This episode of Because Science is sponsored by Lightstream. Did Link really have three days to live in Majora's Mask? It would be a terrible fate, wouldn't it? To be obliterated by a falling moon in just three days time. Sure, it's a very unlikely scenario in an old video game that has a lot of bleak and very bizarre things in it, but if you look into the science of the sinister driving force behind The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask, you find that astrophysically speaking, this nearly 20 year old video game is almost exactly right. The science behind Majora's Mask's moon is the subject of many nerdy videos like this one, but I've never seen one based on the thought experiment that the game seems to pose directly. If directed by some evil force, how long would it really take a moon to fall from orbit to a planet's surface? Majora's Mask is easily one of my favorite video games of all time, so I think that after waiting 18 years, it's time to finally answer this question. What I want to know is how realistic a three day fall time for a moon really is. Is Link's 72 hours in Termina too long, too short, or just astrophysically right? However, we can only base a decent conclusion off of known values. You'll see what I mean in a second. Let's just make sure that my old man in a wizard hat telescope is correctly focused and yes, take a look. We know that it takes three days for the moon in Majora's mass to hit Termina, but we don't know that moon's mass, the mass of the planet Termina is on, or how far from the surface the moon starts, though others have tried estimating all of these things. But instead of estimating, we can simply use our moon and our own planet's values to get a good idea of how realistic having three days to stop a falling moon is. If it would take around three days for our moon to fall, then the game's time timeline is plausible. After all, the constellations Cassiopeia and Orion, as they appear from Earth, are both in the night sky in Majora's Mask. So using Earth-like values makes some sense. Hmm. That means that we're gonna use six trillion trillion kilograms as the mass of the planet that Termina is on, 70 billion trillion kilograms for the mass of the dangerous Sinister Moon, and 384,400 kilometers for the orbital distance of that moon, no matter how close it looks in the game. That imp just shook his butt at me. Me! Of course, to get the moon to fall straight down to Earth, it would have to be stopped in its circular orbit, which would be very, very hard to do. Our moon, currently orbiting around us at around 1,000 meters per second, has more kinetic energy because of its large mass than a million tons of Moo Moo moving at 99.99% the speed of light. It's a lot. But again, let's assume that something as powerful as Majora's mass can generate the forces necessary to bring this kinetic energy all the way down to zero <laughs> without completely destroying the moon, which would happen. So with the moon stopped in place, because of gravity's omnipresent pulling, it would start falling in a straight line down towards Earth. That sounds pretty easy to calculate. We have the gravitational force equation right here, but in our case, the planet and the moon are constantly changing the distance that they are from each other because they're falling into each other, and so the velocity is constantly changing and the acceleration is constantly changing too, which changes the force between them. So we would need very complicated maths to calculate the time to impact instant by instant. Thankfully, we don't actually need those advanced Mass because we can get time to impact from other important cosmic relationships, like the one that Tail and Tattle have. Tattletail! Did you know? It took me 18 years. Did you know that? You did not. If you play around with orbit shapes, you can get around complicated calculus. Hey, how much time do we have left? Because if I... All the way back in 1619, smart boy Johannes Kepler, after researching the observations of a one Tycho Brahe, the astronomer with a golden nose, no seriously, look it up, published his third law of planetary motion. 
This third law of planetary motion states that when you have two objects in orbit around each other, like the Earth around the Sun, the square of the orbital period, how long it takes to make one full revolution, is proportional to the cube of the semi-major axis of that orbit shown right here. Oh yeah, and all this stuff in the middle is because of smart boy Isaac Newton's laws. I know, I never, no, I didn't forget. Talk about you constantly. Kepler also determined that the shape of planetary orbits around a large body like our sun are not circles, as was previously believed. They are in fact ellipses, which are kind of like squashed circles with foci or focal points right here. <laughs> now, what determines the shape of an ellipse is called the ellipse's eccentricity. And for planets in our solar system, that eccentricity ranges from zero to one and somewhere in between. Now, the closer the eccentricity gets to zero, the more the ellipse widens out into a circular shape. And the closer that the ellipse and its eccentricity gets to one, the more it flattens out into a line. When the eccentricity reaches exactly one, it does become a line. And look at this. This is exactly the path we want our moon to take as it falls down to our planet, a straight line path. And we already have the equation to determine all of these variables. I know, I was getting to it. No one upseed you. Yet, yet, I. So here is our incredibly stretched out elliptical orbit with an eccentricity of one. It is basically a straight line path from moon to planet. Now, we could use the equation that we used before to get the time to orbit, and that would be the time it takes the moon to fall. But remember that we do not want a full orbit of the moon going all the way to the planet and all the way back, because once it reaches the planet, it's going to slam into it, so we actually only need half of the orbital time. That's a lot of math, but if you plug in the orbital distance of our moon to our equation with Newton's gravitational constant, the mass of our planet and the mass of our moon, then, if Termina is an Earth-like planet that has an Earth-like moon and an evil skull kid with Majora's mass stop that moon and let it fall to Earth, then how long would Link have to live? The math says it would be four days, 19 hours, and 46 minutes. A bit over four days isn't exactly three days, I know, but the math could have said minutes or weeks or months. The fact that these two values are so close is amazing to me. And Majora's mask wouldn't even have to change that much to be consistent with real physics. Hey, how much time do we have left? Because if I can't do the thing where we... Wow. That is getting worse. If we play around with the values in our equation now, we can pretty easily get the exact 72 hours before Termina is terminated. For example, if we choose to move Termina's moon closer to it because it looks so dang close in the game, we would only have to move it 25% closer to an orbital distance of 280,000 kilometers to make the time exact. Or what if the planet Termina is on is a super Earth with 2.6 times the mass? Then you get 72 hours too. Or you could assume, like some have, that Termina's moon is super massive and give it, at least in our example, 131 times more mass, and then you would get the exact time to impact that the game states. Or it could be a combination of any and all of these variables all changing at once. And all of these variables changing isn't as weird or out of the question in the same game that shows you a fish guitarist dying at your feet when you're 10. Or for the sake of completeness, we could use the amount of time that you have in real time after blowing on the cartridge and booting up the game to stop the moon. 54 minutes. Because the moon in Majora's Mask does look so much closer than our moon when we look up in the night sky, I moved it closer to achieve this time. And I found that if you moved it 95% closer, closer than our GPS satellite's orbit, then it would crash into the surface of the planet in just 54 minutes in just the same amount of time that a normal play session allows for, oh boy, we gotta get going.
So the time that Link would actually have left to live if a moon was falling into a planet, at least giving our assumptions and our math, is amazingly close to what Majora's Mask says, which is awesome. And unlike other videos, which have to deal with the fact that the moon looks like it's going so slowly in the game and doesn't impact Termina very quickly, our moon, after accelerating four days through space, would impact Termina really, really hard. Again, calculating the final impact velocity would take some advanced math, so let's instead use a simulator like the very cool Universe Sandbox to do the work for us. And if you let the moon fall to Earth, you find that it is no laughing matter. In fact, it would consume everything. Oh no, gotta get back. Gotta get, gotta get back. Who knows this, what is the song? This is a dead instrument, gotta get, oh. Oh, I guess we're going. I didn't even play anything. So, the classic Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask is almost scientifically accurate. If you take the plot of the game as a real thought experiment in our universe, stopping our moon in orbit and letting it fall to Earth, you find that it takes just over four days for it to crash into us. Now, I know that this isn't Termina and we found four, almost five days and not three, but it's so close that it's a fascinating fate, isn't it? Because science. Another way you can use this equation as a thought experiment is to see how long it would take the Earth to fall into the sun if the Earth stopped orbiting. And if you do the exact same math, it comes to about 64.6 days. So you'd have a little over two months to live and probably even less because as the Earth got closer to the sun, it would heat up and heat up and heat up, and one side of the planet, unless we were still spinning, would be vaporized, and the other side of the planet wouldn't, and it would be a slow-moving apocalypse, and I should make this a movie. What would I call it? Uh, Sunfall. It's lame. Hey, when do you want to start paying less interest on your credit card debt? How about today with a credit card consolidation loan from Lightstream? Lightstream rewards consumers who have good credit with a great interest rate and no fees. You can get a credit card consolidation loan from 5.49% APR with AutoPay. The application's 100% online and you can even get funds as soon as today. You could also save thousands of dollars in interest. On top of Lightstream's already low rates, the only way to get this fantastic additional interest rate discount is to go to Lightstream dot com slash science. That's L-I-G-H-T-S-T-R-E-A-M dot com slash science. In case you can't spell. Subject to credit approval. Rate includes 0.5% auto pay discount available only when you select auto pay prior to loan funding. Terms and conditions apply and offers are subject to change without notice. Visit Lightstream.com for important information about limits on Lightstream loans and same day funding. Thank you so much for watching, Andrew. If you like this video, please consider liking and subscribing. And if you are on YouTube, hit that notification bell because we have a lot of nerdy stuff that we get up to on this channel and you will not want to miss it. Yes. And if you want more of me, check out Musquatch back on Nerdist.com or the space program on ProjectAlpha.com. If you sign up for Project Alpha for a free 30-day trial now, you can get this show two days earlier than everyone else. And follow me and Because Science on social media here. <laughs>